the issue that we went in thinking was going on was actually not even close to what was actually happening. Neil actually ended up being out of town that week, so it was just me and the girls. I called Neil at one point and I said, you need to get here right now. This is way more than what we thought it was going to be. And by the time that he arrived, maybe an hour and a half to two hours into us being at the hospital, um, the pediatrician walked into the room and she asked that someone take Emma to one of the playrooms and um, she sat down with us on the bed um, and she had tears in her eyes and I just knew in that moment that it wasn't something that was going to be good news. I remember sitting in the ambulance with her on a, a gurney strapped down, absolutely powerless to do anything to help her other than to just be with her. That, that's, that's been pretty, pretty challenging as a, as a father, um, as a parent, even as a husband, is, is to not be able to walk in and, and fix it. The first night that we were there, um, I came a little later than Neil, so I had time in the car to just kind of think and process and pray about everything that we were going through, and we got to the hospital, and she's just laying in her bed, and the only thing that I knew to do was to lay my hands on my child and pray for her life, to pray that, that we would be able to find out what was going on, that it would be something that could be taken care of, that it was something that would be curable. And as I'm looking back, my prayers changed from please to save her to prayers of thanksgiving for who she is as a child and just thanking God for her, for her brown eyes and her beautiful smile and her inquisitive nature. And that just kind of started me on this path of like, this isn't something that happened to us. This is something that God's allowing us to go through so that we can be changed and hopefully be a light for Him in this dark world. I visibly remember that week, uh, the, the, the one doctor at the hospital in Pittsburgh is very, uh, he's got a very loud kind of attitude and he kind of barges in like a bull in a china shop. Um, but I remember the Friday, Friday was the first full day we've been there. Uh, he kind of came in. We were still, you know, lost about what was going on. He kind of just came in the afternoon after she had had a scan and said, she needs to go down and get the biopsy procedure right now. You can't wait. I can't tell you what's going to happen. You just need to go do this. Uh, so, of course, we didn't really understand the procedure, how uh, invasive it was going to be, that kind of thing. Uh, but the reason that that sticks out to me was uh, she got kind of the last slot that day on Friday, which allowed them to start the pathology of figuring out what it was. And if she didn't get it on Friday, she wouldn't have been able to do it on Monday. Um, later we found out, based upon the type of cancer that she has, it can double in size in a day or two. So given the fact that it was already half the size of her stomach, um, who knows what it might have been like even two days longer um, than it already was. So even though we were uh, kind of overwhelmed at that point and maybe a little upset that the doctor wasn't stopping and, and listening to our questions and, and, and answering our questions, I should say, um, I look back at that as kind of a God's timing kind of thing and, and helping, uh, helping Emma. This is a tough time, but God's here with me now and he's been with me the whole way leading up to this point and I don't want to say any of these things and act like this isn't been horrible because it really has been and I am still struggling a lot with having to go through this and asking questions like why was our Emma chosen for this for this path and, and why did this happen to our family but I am also seeing in the midst of that how God really does fulfill his promises of being there for us and carrying us in those times of terrible tragedy, whatever that might be. I remember thinking, again, thinking about why Emma, why would you do this to Emma, not 
specifically to me or to, so to someone else, right? And why her? Um, she doesn't deserve this. Uh, this isn't. This isn't for her. I don't. I don't understand why. But since then, right? I, I've seen. I've seen how God can use this kind of a, a negative, uh, negative illness or, or whatever you want to call it, uh, for His glory in terms of pulling people together, pulling people towards Him. Um, I feel like he's, he's not only strengthened our faith, but he's, he's strengthened the faith of other people. One of the neat things for her is that at this young age, she's really experiencing what it is like when people trust Jesus. And I just keep thinking about, you know, what a way to start out your life, you know, facing this, this huge thing that most people don't have to go through, but she can, she has the opportunity already to see God's faithfulness. And I just think that she's going to become an amazing, an amazing voice for the kingdom of God because of this thing that she's going through now, this yucky tumor as she calls it. And it's just, I mean, it's an honor to watch her walk through this and to just know that God is carrying her and protecting her. I could have never before something like this imagined how you could go through something so terrible and so hard, something that is every parent's worst nightmare, literally, but still, but still have those moments of joy and happiness. And I, I truly, truly believe that that happens because of God. 